Good evening, good evening. Happy Wednesday, happy live, happy mild weather, happy almost Easter. I feel like behind it almost looks like um, Niagara Falls, but it's just where the ice has not melted yet. Anyways, I hope you guys are all well and amazing. You enjoyed the very uh, mild and nice temperatures we've had lately, and you're looking forward to a weekend with your family or loved ones or just off work or something relaxing. I am going to do my normal today, which is go through your guys' questions and answers, some that have come in throughout the week, as well as update you on what's going on in the real estate world and give you some happy news in the mix of it as well, okay? So feel free to ask any questions that you have, and otherwise I will just blab away, okay? Uh, the first question comes from Mandy and Bradford, okay? So Mandy and Bradford said, my grandparents are moving in with us and want to put one of those chair lifts in. I feel it'll really hurt a, re a resale down the road. What do you suggest? Um, thank you, Mandy, for asking. So yeah, it's definitely not ideal for people in purchasing. However, they are expensive, so a lot of people just resell them. So let's just say you buy one for 9000 there's a pretty good chance you could resell it for like 70 to, uh, 7800 etc. So it doesn't cost you that much, and then you just get somebody to like fix the, the walls and so forth. Um, but to actually just sell it, yeah, is not ideal with that in the house, just because not as many people want that. Same with like a front ramp, not as many people want that either. Um, hi, Mandy, how are you? I can't really see all of the bubbles there, Jessica, and it looks like Trevor, but thank you guys for popping in. If you have any questions, feel free to ask, okay? So I'm going to do some questions um, from you guys. Happy news, and again, the real estate updates. So first, like picture, um, not picture, but a scarf, do you know what I mean, in uh, with a bowl, okay? So you know when they do like the, not Zorro, but whatever you call that, um, for the bull to come running. So basically there was a person in India, a train driver, and that's not the right name, but you know what I mean? Um, the captain of the train or the caboose or whatever is still not the proper wording, but whatever, I can't think of it. So he was driving down the tracks and he saw, you know, a red um, flag, basically a large thing being uh, waved and he slammed on the brakes and it stopped and turns out there was a lady, she was walking to work along the train tracks and she had seen a break in the train rail, so she knew if the train uh, hit it, it would have derailed the whole plane, train, not plane, train, with hundreds of um, passengers on board. So she did save everybody, which obviously is amazing. And oddly, the driver offered her 100 rupees, which I googled, which is a dollar and 65 cents, which is crazy. She just saved like, you know, 400 people's lives and they offer her a dollar and 65 cents. But anyways, hi Margie, how are you? Hope you're amazing. Um, um, I was chatting with Margie earlier today. Okay, so what is the next thing I have here? I think it was a question. Um, next question is from Tammy in Oro. So Tammy in Oro said, how come I see two identical homes listed, but one will be listed for $6.99 and one will be for $9.19, but they're almost identical. What's the deal? Um, thank you, Tammy, for asking. So to be honest, people can list for whatever they want, but my guess would be that the, I think you said $6.99 and $9.19, the $6.99 one is probably holding offers, so they're probably hoping for closer to nine, and the $9.19 is also probably hoping for closer to nine. So one is just saying, hey, we'll get everybody through and see what they'll offer, and the other one's like, hey, we don't want that, we're just gonna list close to what we want, not have as many people through, but the people know, you know, we don't want $7.25 or $7.50, et cetera. So back in, I'd say January or February, 95% of people were doing the low and hold, and nowadays I'd say 20 to 30% are doing the low and hold, and it tends to be more the cheaper price points, like the 400 to 600, and the higher price points aren't really doing it much anymore. There's some of them that are still doing it, but not as many, so that would be my guess without like diving into it deeper. You know, let's just say one backs onto a strip mall, the other one backs onto EP land, one has a walkout basement, the other one doesn't, one has a basement kitchen. Um, in a pool, the other one doesn't, etc. but that would be my guess, that one's holding offers and one is not. Um, okay, so there was, again, I will do real estate updates in a little bit, but first I'm going to do some happy news and questions. Um, so there was a stray dog in Kosovo, which I didn't even know where that was. I had to look it up. It was between Albania and um, Serbia. And basically there was this dog that kept coming around the troops every day, always wagging his tail and looking for food. And then they didn't see him for a while and they had named him Duke. So they started to look around the town a bit and they did find him and he had been shot. So there is a company or a non-for-profit and it's called Paws of War. So they ended up getting a vet over there and looking after him and taking um, six months of rehab with the dog. 
Anyways, and now the dog's been adopted out to one of the soldiers who's back in the U.S. So I thought that was cute. Um, next question is from Cassandra from Baxter. Again, if you guys want to ask your questions in here, you can. If not, I'll just uh, answer some that have come in throughout the week. Hope you guys are all well and healthy. So Cassandra from Baxter said, I know I need a new AC unit, but really can't afford it. What do you think of renting one? If anything goes wrong with it, they will fix or replace it. Uh, Cassandra, yes, they will fix or replace it. However, your buyout is probably high. So let's just say the unit's worth about $3,000. Your buyout might be like $7,000 or $8,400 or something like that. And if you are planning on selling your property, uh, your home in some time uh, that you haven't paid it out, that they're going to want you to pay that out because they're not going to want to pay it. Or they're just going to deduct that from the amount that they want to pay you. So let's just say you want a million. They're like, hey, I want to take off $8,200 or whatever number I said for that because they are not getting a free you know, free and clear AC. So if you can buy it out, I would, but I get that not everybody has the funds to do so. So if it's your only means and you really want an AC, then do that. Otherwise, maybe wait till next summer or the summer after when you can afford it just because it is a lot harder to sell. So to be honest, when people sell, they don't like rented furnaces, rented ACs, and solar is not very popular just because there's often lots of contracts and it gets a little bit complicated, okay? But thank you for asking. What is next? There's one more thing before real estate. There was a lottery winner and um, he was retired. He was from France and he said he only played when there's big jackpots. He won 200 million and he's uh, already given almost all of it away and he's given it to um, basically help the um, forests and, and so forth in Africa. So yeah, it was just strictly rainforest. I was trying to see if it was a name of it, but it's just strictly rainforest in, rainforest in Africa. And he said it feels a lot better to give away than to have. So that's what he decided to do. He always said, if I ever win, I'm not keeping it. I'm giving it away. So I just thought that was nice because obviously that is not the way most people's minds are set up. So I will go now to real estate if you guys don't have any questions. Okay. Okay. So 15.5% of people in Ontario own more than one property. And of those 15.5%, if you look at the homes that they own, that makes up 31% of real estate in Ontario. So 31% of real estate, they own multiple properties. If they own that, they own multiple properties, okay? So some people are saying that that's a problem. Obviously, there's many problems uh, contributing to our lack of inventory. However, this time of year, we are getting more inventory. And it's not that the market's slowing. It's literally just the time of year. It happens every single year. Um, not as many people want to move when there's three feet of snow. Not as many people um, want to move when it's not school switching over. So they want to e either go the end of June or July or August so they can get all sorted and situated before the kids go back to school. So that's why it's more common that a lot of people list in April and May, etc. Um, so basically in the last two years, home prices have gone up 50%, which is crazy. Um, but there has been increased mortgage rules, which not rules, mortgage rates, which we'll talk about later. And then politicians have been putting certain things into place, which is um, not not doing this to the market, not doing this, but it's not like this anymore. You know, it's definitely a slower uh, space. Space is not the word, but you know what I'm saying? Slower scale going upwards. Um, so no need to worry that there is more inventory and that you might see a couple of uh, price corrections. Let's just say a neighbor's house sold for 1.2 in um, January and now it's selling, the neighbor's one selling for 1.1. That happened in 2017 as well. The prices were just different in 2017. So let's just say fall of 2016, the price was 400. And then in January, February, March, etc. of 2017, it was 535. Then it was like 490 in the fall of 2017. And then it was back up to five, you know, 50 the next spring and then 610, 750, 830, etc. cetera. So just sometimes there's a correction and especially when a whole bunch of things happen like 2017 that are happening now, like a whole bunch of rates are increasing as well as the government saying, hey, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that, which I'll talk about in a little bit, okay? Um, so it's thought that the Bank of Canada is going to raise their rate today from 0.5 to 1%. And then the banks often follow suit. However, in the past month, the banks have just been doing it on their own without the Bank of Canada doing it. They're just like, yeah, we don't care that the Bank of Canada hasn't done it. We're doing it anyways, which is not as common. Um, then next they're doing it, not necessarily doing it, but possibly doing it is June 1st, then July 13th, then September uh, 7th, then October 26th and December 7th. So not all of those times mean that the rate's going to go up, but they're possible times that they could go up from the Bank of Canada. Okay. Um, 
So if this happens, if all of those, you know, rates go up, then it'll affect people by a quarter. So obviously if they're approved for a million dollars, they will only be approved for 750,000. That's again, if all of them happen, not just if the one happens, okay? Um, so some people might be forced to stay where they are longer, like they wanted a bigger yard or they wanted an ensuite or they wanted this or that. And they're going to say, no, we're actually going to stay for a while because of the interest rates, etc. Other people might have to rent longer and so forth. So it's just the purchasing power is affected. Okay. Um, the average house in Toronto still went up in March. I will do local later on, but the average price in March still went up. It was the smallest uh, rate increase that has happened in the last six months. However, it still went up. It didn't go down. Okay. Um, and so one thing that's kind of a bit of a problem is a lot of people still have January and February prices in their mind. However, with the rate increases um, that have happened so many times in March, as well as the war, etc., cetera, um, the rates are not, not the rates, the prices are selling are not the same, but this happens every single year because there's just more inventory. So instead of being against five other people in Barrie, you're now against 85 other people in Barrie. So it just changes. So the buyers have more to choose from. It is still not a buyer's market. It's still not an even market or level market is still a uh, seller's market. It's just leveling out a little bit. Okay. Um, so the government is also putting pressure on the market. So Trudeau um, said, not said, but basically they want to squeeze out investors and they also want to double the amount of new home construction. Um, and that was a budget that they released last week. And that's where all that talk is of like the 15.5% of people owning 31% of the real estate. So that's where all that came from. Um, so when I was saying about January and February, so let's just say before January and February, people were selling 899, listing 899, I should say, but getting 1.1. Now some are still getting 1.1, but they're listing 1.1, but some are even getting like a million 60 or a million 70, just because again, there's more inventory, okay? So this is the first time we've seen some people go under asking. Um, what else was I going to say? Um, so even if the rate uh, increases tonight, um, buyers, I don't know what I was saying here. I can't even read my own thing. Oh yeah, <laughs> I can read now. Um, even without that, if it doesn't affect it at all, that it's buyers, because of the last month, remember I said that the interest rates have gone up so much, it's already affected their purchasing power by 10%. So let's just say they were approved for a million, they're only approved now, say for 910 or 900 approximately, uh, or 750, now 675, etc. So it's already done that already in the past month without the Bank of Canada doing whatever they possibly might do today. Okay. Um, there was a poll done by Scotia Bank. It was like 3,300 people, and 43% of Canadians said they were putting moving on hold, which is high because last year at the same poll, only 33% said they were putting moving on hold, and the year before, only 20% put moving on hold. So from 20% all the way to 43%, so more than doubled from the beginning of the pandemic. Uh, you know, obviously the pandemic and people are like, what's happening? But yet it's double now that people are saying they're putting moving on hold. They're saying they're putting moving on hold because of like increased of everything, food, gas, etc. The lack of inventory as well as the crazy high prices as well as, of course, the interest rates. Okay. Um, hi, Eric. How are you? I can't see who else it is. I think it's Dwayne and Natalie. Thank you guys for popping in. Um, okay. So, and then if they actually look, so you know how I said 43% of people are putting, uh, buying on hold. If we look at just 18 to 34 year olds, 56% of them are putting moving on hold, which is crazy high. Um, 62% of those people said they hope that the, um, prices drop and then they will buy then. And they still think that Canada's rates are going to go up this year by 10.5%. And that will then put Canada's average sales price at just over $859,000 if that happens. And a lot of people are willing to move north or willing to move out of province. So 35% of people in this 3,200 or whatever uh, poll said that they would leave Ontario or at least move uh, more than five hours from their home. And that was up from 29% last year that said they would do that. And again, when we look at the younger generation, 18 to 34, 49% of them said they would move out of province or far north, okay? So it's a lot of people that either want to move or don't want to buy and are putting it on hold. Um, and 59% of people said, hey, I'm going to stay and I would rather renovate my home than move, okay? So 59%. 
Um, like I said before, nine out of 10 people in January, February are holding, and now about two or three are holding. However, this switch of trend has not caught up in Muskoka. So anywhere basically water-wise, lakes, rivers, streams, um, islands, etc., are still super sought after. Um, there was an economist who basically said they think by the end of next year it'll flatten out. They didn't say it would drop. They just think it'll flatten out a bit and not raise at such a crazy rate. So again, let's just say, you know, the past two years are like this. They think this year will be a little bit and they think next year will be more level just as again, more inventory um, comes on. And let's say they do double up the amount of homes that they're building and so forth. However, they said one way that will not make it like this and it'll make it continue like this, etc., is immigration as well as so many people have a lot of equity in their homes because of you know them going up just 50 percent in the last two years let alone um, almost tripling in the past 10 years so a lot of people have equity so they still have a lot to work with so they said that still might make it not flatline and go up as well as a lot of people were um, approved at the two percent higher so the stress rate so even if it goes up one percent or 1.25 etc they were approved at two percent higher anyway so it might still continue to climb next year okay I don't know if you guys have questions, but I'm just talking away. Um, okay, so tons of people are priced out of the city, but a lot of people that are priced out of the city say, if I'm priced out of the city, I still want something pretty. So that is why they want waterfront. So that is still super popular. So there was a place, for example, up between Lindsay and Minden. It was an A-frame. It was listed for $9.98 and sold for $1.41 on a tiny little landlocked lake. So you couldn't like get to the States from it or you couldn't go to another lake or whatever. It was literally just one lake, uh, $1.41. Then there was one in uh, Brecon, which is just kind of by the casino. They were listed for $9.99888. All the eights, by the way, are good luck for the Chinese. Um, so just in case you're curious why that, that one sold 1.601. Okay. So cottage country and waterfronts are still going crazy in towns and cities. They just, instead of listing again, 899 to get 1.1, a lot are just listing at 1.1. Again, not everybody, but that's more of the trend lately. Um, a lot of people are choosing something with short-term rental potential. So because, you know, mortgage rates are higher. So let's just say, Hey, I was planning on only paying 2,500 a month. Now I'm going to be paying 3100 a month, but that extra 600 if they say, hey, I could actually rent out this property and make money kind of thing. So they're just doing that. So a lot of them are looking for some rental potential, okay? Um, one of the things that came from, so it's called More Homes for Everyone Act, um, which basically back in 2017, they put the foreign buyers tax on at 15% and they put it in the golden horseshoe. So it wasn't just Toronto, it expanded out, hit Barrie, hit Hamilton, etc. For 15% and now that is 20%. However, a lot of economists say that that's not going to do anything at all because only 3.4% of the homes that are owned in Ontario are from foreign investors. So to affect the 3.4%, which doesn't even mean, oh, you're taking them out completely. Some will still continue to buy. They don't think it's going to do anything, but it makes some people that vote happy that they raise that from 15 to 20%. Um, they also took out, there used to be a thing like, hey, if you're studying here for two years, um, then you can buy as well as if you're working full time here, you can buy. Basically, it was just trying to save people from buying from China or what have you that don't even live here, don't work here, aren't going to school here, etc. But they've now taken out those other two as well as upping it to the 20 percent. OK, um, they also put 19 million into backlogs for the tribunal as well as the residential and uh, tenancy act. OK. Um, but like I said, all of the economists say because they only own 3.4 percent of real estate, it's not going to do anything. Um, so when I mentioned before about the Bank of Canada rate possibly tonight going from 0.5 to 1, that would be the highest rate in 20 years, not the highest rate, just the highest rate hike at one time. Okay. So, um, whether that happens or not tonight, I don't know yet. I've been doing stuff for this, so maybe it already happened while I was prepping for this, but, um, not that I saw it last. Um, what else was I going to say? So obviously people that have variable rates that will affect their mortgage right away. And then people that have fixed rates, it will not until they go to redo their mortgage. So let's just say their mortgage is up in 2024. Then obviously it might be different. Who knows? We can't predict that far in the future of what the interest rates will be, but maybe their mortgage is going to renew in July of this year. Then obviously that'll be a jump for them as well. And a lot of buyers are rushing to buy right now just because they want to hold their rate. So say they, 
got in at whatever percentage, but it's only good for 90 days. So they're trying to all buy homes firm within 90 days. They don't have to move in within 90 days, but they have to buy a home firm. So a lot of people are still trying to do that before they, again, from maybe from a million go down to a $900 or $900,000 budget from a million. So they're trying to buy, well, they still can afford the million. Again, that's just easy number sake. I also gave the example of 750 to 675, obviously depending on their price point. Um, so locally, the number of homes selling each month, like from month March 2022 over March 2021 is down. So year to date, there is 1,275 homes that have sold in Simcoe County. That is down 26.2% from last year, okay? And within Barrie, there was only 278 homes sold, which is 44.2% down over last year, which is crazy. And some people might be like, 44.2% down, my house that was a million, blah, blah. Um, however, that is not the case. So yes, less homes have sold, but the average has gone up, okay? So the average in March uh, in Simcoe County was a million forty one and forty three dollars. Again, just a million forty one is easier sake, and that was up thirty two percent over March of twenty twenty one. Okay, thirty two percent. So yes, twenty six point two percent less homes sold. However, they are up over thirty two percent the average sales price. And then year to date, the average sales price in Simcoe County is a million forty seven five seventy or a million forty seven to be easy sake, which is thirty four point eight percent over last year at the same time. So if we just did Barry, the average sales price is nine forty two eight sixty five, and that is up thirty three percent. Okay. So again, yes, less homes are sold, but they're selling for more. Okay. And year to date in the surrounding area of Simcoe County, so not counting Barry, but still Simcoe County, so Innisfil, Essa, Springwater, um, Oro Medonte, et cetera. When you do that, the average sales price is 1.166108, which is up 33.9% over last year, okay? Um, average days on market was 10 days in Simcoe County and eight in Barry in March. Again, 10 days on average um, in Simcoe County and eight in Barry. And so last year in Simcoe County, so this will give you an idea of how many less homes are selling, okay? So in Simcoe County in March last year, there were 1,691 homes that were listed and 1,325 of them sold, okay? So 1,325 of the 1,691 is, you know, very good. This year, 1,530 listed, so a little bit less than last year, not much less than last year, 1,691. However, of those 1,530, only 829 sold, Again, whether that's because of the interest rate hike or the war or the combination or people don't want to drive and spend a stupid amount for gas, um, I'm not sure, but that just gives you an idea that less homes are selling. However, they are still selling for more. Okay? Okay. Um, next question is from Claire and Barry. So Claire and Barry said, my friend listed her house and told me it's a mere posting. What does that even mean? Um, thank you, Claire, for asking. So a mere posting is meaning it is just listing it. So the brokerage that has it basically says, hey, we're just going to list it on a board. We're not going to do anything else. We're not going to do any advertising. We're not going to help you, etc. If you want, if an offer comes in, you have to pay us extra to talk to you about the offer and what to do. If you want to do an amendment with us, you have to pay us extra, blah, blah. You have to use their lawyers or it's an extra cost, etc. And you get to pick what you give the other side commission. So normally on average, the buying side gets 2.5, but in a mere posting, you can say anything over one cent. So you could say, hey, I want to give you only 1% or only 0.5% or what have you. So that's what a mere posting is. Literally, you're just saying, hey, put this up, but don't advertise or do anything with it and don't help me at all. Um, so that's what a mere posting is. So sometimes people try that, but then usually they end up listing with a realtor. But I wish your friend lots of luck. Um, what else do we have? Happiest countries in the world. The top... 10 happiest countries in the world. Canada did not make, but it did make the top 15. So the happiest countries in the world, the first one was Finland, which is the fifth year in a row. It's been the happiest country in the world, which I was there maybe four years ago. And it didn't seem overly happy to me, but maybe it was just the city I was in. Um, Denmark got second. Iceland was third. Switzerland was fourth. Uh, Netherlands with, was fifth. Luxembourg was sixth. Sweden was seventh. Norway was eighth. Israel was ninth and New Zealand was 10th. So we did not make the top 10. However, we made the top 15. So Austria was 11th, Australia was 12th, um, Ireland was 13th, Germany 14th, and Canada 15th. So we squeaked in 
to that one and the top 15. We were number five um, uh, in 2010. So 12 years ago we were number five, but now we're number 15. And number 16 was the US and they were 19 last year. So they're creeping up and we're going the wrong way lately. Um, so despite you know the pandemic and everything going on, in that survey they also asked, like as I said, it was about happiness, etc. And even though pandemic and so forth, the main things that people said made them happy was helping strangers, volunteering, and donating money. So even though the pandemic, people still like helping and giving back. So I like that. The next question comes from Amanda and Nate and Barry. So Amanda and Nate said, we purchased in 2015 and are so happy we did. We could never afford anything in this market. We have put in a new kitchen and partially finished the basement. I want to make over the laundry room and change one bedroom to an ensuite. What do you think? Um, thank you, Amanda and Nate, for asking. To be honest, I don't know if you're asking for resale or just for your purposes. So if it's for resale, I would look at other homes. So say, for example, your three bedroom, one bathroom, and then I'd look up other air, um, homes in your area that are only two bedroom, because then you'd only be two if you took one away, right? And two bathrooms with that ensuite to see. So say they're 150,000 more than you and it's only going to cost you 30,000 to do, then sure. But if they're only 20,000 more than you and it's gonna cost you 60,000 to do, then obviously the math is wrong on there. So I would just do a bit of research beforehand. And again, I don't know if it's for resale or just for your own purposes, but if it is a three bedroom to two bedroom, not ideal. If it's a four bedroom to a three bedroom, I would imagine you'd already have an ensuite anyways, but it is just harder to sell a two bedroom than a three bedroom to be honest. So um, that's that. But some people will say, hey, I'd rather just pay $148 more a month and have it built into my mortgage and a new property is what most people do. But some people say, oh, I don't like the way they pick those cupboards or I don't like this or I would have done this or what have you. So some people like more control and like doing it on their own. So I totally get that as well. Um, the next happy story was a lady who uh, basically rowed across the Atlantic, like actually row, row, row your boat. Um, she is 35. She's a lawyer in London. She had never rowed before. When she was 32, she decided to train to go rowing. And she left from Canary Islands, which is just to the west of um, Africa. And then she landed up in the Bahamas uh, 40 days and 19 hours later. And before that, the uh, prior Guinness Book of World Records was 49 days. So she wasn't even trying to beat it. She just said, I just want to show that anybody can do it. I had no training before and I just decided I wanted to do it. So she did it and then didn't know she was going to beat the record by nine days. And um, she said it was a lot of mindset because many times she was out in the ocean. It was just her and kind of some sharks and dolphins, etc. And she would row 12 to 14 hours a day. So mindset and uh, you know you can do whatever you put your mind to. She did uh, want to do it to raise money as well. Now, next question comes from, if my fingers would work here, uh, comes from Chris and Barry. So um, Chris and Barry said, you sold my neighbor's house and the price he told me versus what I see on House Sigma is different. Uh, which one is right or does one include commission or how does that work? Um, so thank you, Chris, for asking. So whatever price is posted never includes commission. So he would have had to pay a commission on top of that. So it doesn't include that. So if he told you a different price, he's just exaggerating because it has to be reported properly. So sometimes people I find the more people they tell, let's just say they sold for a million two, they sell this person a million two, they tell this person a million two, two, five, they tell this person a million two, seven, five, et cetera. And the more people they tell, it tends to go up in price. But whatever is on House Sigma or Realtor.ca or wherever you're looking will be right. So he's just um, adding some numbers to his pocket or bank account, uh, or so he thinks, but um, that's not really what it's sold for. But thank you for asking, and congrats to your friend. Um, next thing is basically man's best friend, obviously. Many people love dogs, so there were three people that moved in to a flat in England, that's what they call an apartment in England, and they all had dogs at home, but their landlord was really strict on it, so they saw a lab at their neighbor's, and they wrote a letter and said like, hey, we love dogs, blah, blah, if you ever want us to walk your dog, etc., we'd be happy to do so. And it was just cute because the owner of that dog wrote back pretending she was the dog and even had like a little paw print on it. 
and said, uh, you can absolutely be my friend, but at the cost of five, you know, ball throws per day and unlimited belly scratches. Um, so it's just cute. So now they're all friends. They walk the dog a lot and hang out. So I just like anything happy. I hope you guys are all amazing. You have a super Easter weekend. Any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Uh, stay kind to one another and have a great day.